Pastor Daly told us his faith grew. Faith can grow. There are four levels of faith from scripture. There's no faith, little faith, great faith, exceeding great faith. Hallelujah. Help us in Jesus' name. Please be seated. God bless you. I love the word of God because of its ability to empower men. An ordinary man in the presence of light becomes a mighty man. A weak man in the presence of light becomes a mighty man. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says, Arise and shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It says, For darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise. Verse 3 says, Gentiles will come to your light and their kings to the brightness of your rising. Gentiles will come to your light. What is light? The Bible defines it. That which makes manifest is light. Whatever can reveal the glory of God is light. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And it's important for us to appreciate what God has been doing all through this conference. There's been a transference of his wisdom. There's something in scripture called the wisdom of the just. Luke 1, 17. The wisdom of the just. You will have to be in the kingdom to understand the excellency of that wisdom. Hallelujah. It says, by me, wisdom speaking, kings reign and princes decree justice. It says, with me are riches, wealth, and honor, yea, durable riches and righteousness. Hallelujah. One of the major expressions of the glory of God is his wisdom. There are many expressions of the glory of God, but three of them represent the pillars as far as expressing the glory of God is concerned. Number one is his wisdom. Number two is his power. Number three, wealth. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. There is glory in wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. There is glory in power. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glory a glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. Hallelujah. The extent of your exploits in this kingdom does not just depend on God's love for you. Please listen. The same Lord is rich unto all, but our possibilities are defined among other factors by the extent and the quality of light that we receive. He says, but the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. He made many lights, but then he made two great lights, one to rule the day and the other to rule the night. Your dominion is at the instance of light. In fact, Genesis chapter 1 says, He called the light day and the darkness he called night. Profound revelation. That means in the realm of the spirit, darkness is not when evening comes. The moment there is no light, you are in darkness. God's definition of day is not 8 a.m., not 12 noon. God's definition of day is the arrival of light. And weeping is associated with night and darkness. For as long as it is dark, you will cry. But joy comes with the morning. Hallelujah. So this conference has been a feast of light. And I told you at the start of my session that light has the power to transit men. The assignment of light is to insist that you do not remain at that level. It cannot leave you at that level. Hallelujah. That means there is a more superior version of you. I like to use the molting of a snake. You know how a snake molts? Comes out of its former self. Becomes bigger, greater, and more effective. You will look at your former self and not find it again. Because there is a wiser version. A more powerful version. Many believers fail because they do not have privileges like this to be methodically taught the ways of God. Are we together now? The Bible says he showed his ways to Moses. 
Results happen in the kingdom not by luck, not by guess. It happens at the instance of understanding. God is a God of patterns. Please listen carefully. Everything God creates within it is the pattern for the continuity of that result. So he made man, he made woman, and never had to make them again. He designed a pattern within that system that every time you want that result, you find the pattern. And the proof you have found the pattern is the glory connected to the pattern. The glory of God in your finances will only be revealed when the patterns he's designed as far as his economic system is concerned is found. And so Jeremiah 6.16 says, Stand in the way and ask for the ancient part. Ask. That's what you do when you do not know the way. Ask. Are we together? And he says, when you find it, walk there in it, and you will step into your Sabbath. A man can come into his Sabbath. It can be clear that the glory of God is at work in your life. This is my final session. I just want you, I hope you're, you're getting something already. Now, let me remind you of one more thing. Most believers do not know why they exist as far as God's prophetic program is concerned. It's beyond heaven. Are we together now? Yes. You're going to be learning something very powerful. I have one more key and then we'll pray. My life changed when I realized this, that I exist to be a manifestation of the glory of God upon the earth. The word glory comes from the Hebrew word kabod. The Greek is doxa. The weightiness, an investigation as to why an object or a person is that desirable, that worthy of admiration, is called glory. So if you want to study the glory of God, you have to investigate all the attributes of God that makes God God. His holiness, his wisdom, his power. The Bible says we are his workmanship pastor, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had preordained that we should walk in it. So you're not just a believer roaming around the streets of Leicester or roaming around the United Kingdom. No, God is depending on the excellency of his power in your life to get glory. That means every one of us is a vista, a mirror through which the world will learn God. And I hope if you are the only reference men have to know God, you will not misrepresent him. Yeah. Are we together? That if I'm the only one who becomes a mirror through which men will learn God, can they praise him when they look at my life? So the pursuit for an excellent life is beyond a carnal pursuit to live and make ends meet. It is your participation as far as allowing the glory of God to be revealed in your life concerned this is the correct platform to teach on favor prosperity and all of that the moment you do not connect any pursuit to divine purpose it becomes carnality carnality is not because of what you are seeking it is the fact that whatever you seek does not have a kingdom purpose connected to it so prosperity becomes a cancerous and destructive message if you cannot reveal how the role it plays in revealing the Christ. You get that now? So the entire circumference of the believer's work is with respect to your becoming so that you can become a greater expression of his glory upon the earth. The end point of that is found in Galatians 1.24 and they glorified God in me. God can be glorified in a man. God can be glorified in a businessman. God can be glorified in a pastor. God can be glorified in a church. God can be glorified in Leicester. God can be glorified in your church. God can be glorified in you as a parent. Listen, understand the end point and your Christian experience will not become a plethora of burdensome rituals. Many believers hate church and God because of the narrative about the faith life they have been given. Nothing exciting, nothing inspiring. 
they get saved and come to church and eventually they become angry and weary because they cannot find a sense of destiny. There is no excitement. But when you know that your life should be an ever-increasing revelation, manifestation of the glory of God, you should never have a better yesterday. It's not so because the path of the just is as a shining light that shines more and more onto the perfect day. Are we learning? But the key, listen please, the key is not just the knowledge of what God has made available for you, but you must know how to engage it. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18, it says, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. That in as much as the Zoe life, in truth, because the Bible declares that when you encounter the Son, you have life. But whether or not that life will be made manifest is knowledge dependent. Knowledge dependent. Not salvation dependent. Salvation makes it a fact that you are a recipient of the life of God. But knowledge releases that which you have received in your spirit to be made manifest. Are we together? It is for this reason he gave unto some apostles, some prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, for the maturing, the equipping of the saints, that when the saints become mature, they will do the work of the ministry. That together as one body we will come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ. Not to, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive. Every conference should make the sense matured. You should gain mastery in spiritual things. You should gain command. You should be able to tame life like an animal on the strength of light. Are we learning? Yeah. You should know how things work. This is why conferences like this are a retreat. You camp in God's presence. Men like Kenneth E. Hagen would hold 30 days or more. You know why? Because the truths required for an excelling life are finite. You can lay hold of eternal life. It is the knowledge of God that is eternal. We will never exhaust the knowledge of him. But the factors that make for dominion are finite. You can exhaust it like a course curriculum. A professor never stops learning, but he's still a professor. He has attained a point of mastery accredited globally. This is what you should get to. The realm, your pursuit. And the Bible says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned unless he strives lawfully so we must through this conference cover the gaps in our spiritual understanding something i do not know is responsible for my limitation and if you can take that responsibility and cry like blind Bartimeo, thou son of david show me mercy god shows you mercy by connecting you to light bearers and for some of you who have the light but you do not have grace to demonstrate that light. Because you see, the ten virgins had lamp. The problem was the oil. They were all virgins. It was not an issue of sin or righteousness. It was an issue of wisdom and foolishness. And the wisdom there was that they added oil to the lamp. And the recommendation for those who had lamps without oil was go to them that sell and buy. There are still men that sell. Only that you do not buy with money. You buy with meekness. You buy with humility. You buy with patience. You buy with endurance. Can we pray now? Give me an encounter again. By your spirit. We believe you are blessed by this message by Apostle Joshua Selman. Let us know how this blessed you in the comment section. One of our mission at Kent and the World is to create edifying content in audio, written, and visual forms. We invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we do have daily content for your spiritual growth and edification from the word to music and even visuals. 
to subscribe to our YouTube channel and invite your friends to do the same because we would like a big family with you in it. I'm Bisola with Lean and we'll see you next time.